when I say, who's the master? You say, no, no. What is up, guys? Shown of the King here, back with another video. So, man. Darling in the Franks, Darling in the Franks, Darling in the Franks. This show never ceases to amaze me. So let's let's get some of let's let's not even play games. You guys know what it is. Let's get into this review ASAP. So a little bit of housekeeping. So the group has already gone off into space. The episode actually starts with them shooting off into space in this gigantic uh, Frank that's been retrofitted as a spaceship and is pretty much protected by thousands upon thousands of other Klaxosaur ships as well heading off to go C-02. Now, with that, we have Mitsuru and Kokoro who decide to stay behind and like I thought last week, uh, we were discussing whether or not I thought that if Zero Two was going to stay behind, or was Zero going to bring if Hero was going to bring her body with him. So it looks like I was. It looks like the with the latter, and it looks like Zero Two did stay behind. And again, it wouldn't have made much sense to bring her body anyway, because again, it would have been in a lot of danger. So makes sense. Now with that, Kokoro and Mitsuru had their own little drama slash battle, as they called it, to deal with as well. And that's just kind of, they kind of just made made it seem like he got his memories back. So, but even though he said, even if I can't remember you, I still love you. And and I thought that was kind of cool. Like, it's still a little weird because it is almost like, does he have his memory back? Does he have some memories back? Because when he first lost his memory, he didn't even know who Kokoro was. Like, it wasn't like... Like, does he know that the baby is his? Like, did they tell him, like, yo, the baby is yours? Because no one saw them sleep together. So how do we know that, how does how does Kokoro know that Mitsuru is the one that got her pregnant? I'm just saying. But that out of the way, let's get into the meat and potatoes of this review. So, whew, it was so much that happened. I don't even know where to start. All right. So... Studio Trigger and A1, again, if anybody knows Studio Trigger, they are responsible for some of the best space anime out there. Again, Gurren Lagann and also Kill a Kill, uh, both of those ended up going into space somehow. Uh, Killer, I, I, I do think Gurren Lagann did it better because to this day, I've never seen a stronger mech than uh, Gurren Lagann. Like, literally, this thing was the size of a solar system, so... Their mechs can get pretty out of control. So the group is already heading off into space to fight the big battle. And I like how they anticipated the fans complaining about things not making sense. And what I mean by that is it's like when the group gets into space, they're not only in their new Franks, but they have like powered up Franks. They have matching weapons in their new their new color scheme and it looks great I, I love the i love the color scheme but one would think how like how did you get all of this stuff like how did you guys how are you guys piloting the 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 spaceship like how is all this happening and the way that the studio decided to, to frame it and again i'm glad they thought about that because i can promise you there's going to be a lot of people nitpicking this exact same thing so apparently everything's on autopilot Apparently, it's it's all sentient. The Klaxosaurs, they are all heading out to Mars's orbit because that's where um, the Apos is. That's where, you know, Zero Two is inside of Apos. And that's where they're going. So it's it's running on autopilot. All that stuff was already there waiting for them. It was almost like they knew this was going to happen eventually. So they prepared ahead of time. I know it's a little thin, guys, but again, let's not... Let's not kill him over it, okay? It's it's fine. I'm fine with it, so it's cool. So the battles in space are amazing, absolutely amazing. Like we have the team just cold, you know, working together, destroying Grim. The only the only thing that I would have the only the only negative critique that I would give to the space battle is that it feels it, it even though there were stakes involved, and I'll talk about that in a second. 
it still doesn't feel like the weight is there only because the enemy that they're fighting, Grim, are, are is pretty much faceless. They're all just drones, to to my knowledge. Like there's these little hollow little monster, you know, purple and black looking monsters, but there is no real face to the enemy other than um, Grim. And again, even he doesn't really have. He's not corporeal, you know. He's a, he's just a, a energy. He's just like a energy. So that's that's the only critique that I would have, if any, not a big deal. Now, Hero is actually piloting with the Nines, and apparently Hero is, is, I guess, because of the type of statement that he is, he actually couldn't pilot with any of the other um, groups because he's too powerful, so he would actually overpower them and could hurt them. So because the Nines are all clones of Zero Two, it looks like they'll make a perfect match, and because the Nines are clones of Zero Two, they don't need to have the girl boy match. It could be boy boy, girl girl. It doesn't matter because they're all clones of zero two anyway. So that's actually just a really good way to just say, hey, hero, you can pound to me, and Alpha's going to get him to zero two. And uh, unfortunately, uh, that was also our first death of the actual episode. Is when Alpha had he got his mission done. He got zero. He got hero to zero two, but because we're strapped for time, they didn't have time to kind of like, you know stretch it out so you know alpha has to end up destroying himself to take out a gigantic uh grim drone or whatever it was now one thing i will say about alpha i really appreciate them not going the route of because i thought that once the nines went out into space what they were going to do is once they saw grim or they saw papa that they would revert back to their subservient selves and start attacking the group. But that's not what happened. It looks like they've kind of realized exactly what kind of brainwashing was going on, and they know that they're here to save the world. So I'm really glad that they went out in style and not, you know, having to be taken out by the group. So that was actually very great. Now, with Alpha out of the picture, you know, Hero makes it to zero two, and he attaches to her subconscious, and they kind of go back and we actually end up heading back to Earth. Now, heading back to Earth, I was actually kind of freaked out because that's when we kind of get the final thing with uh, Mitsuru and Kokoro, which was very touching. Like, I keep... It's weird, guys. Like, seriously, I keep... I'm a... I, I don't consider myself a manly man. Like, you know, I don't, I don't cry a lot. You know, but I, sometimes you can get a little bit emotional, but this show is just so weird how that thing, it can invoke those kind of emotions from you, even when you don't see it coming. Because literally, it was just Kokoro and Mitsuru holding each other, screaming each other's names, and I'm just sitting here just watching, like, nope, not going to get me this time. <laughs> not going to get me this time. It got me a little bit, all right? Fuck it. It got me a little bit. So, very happy that they've kind of, and you know, especially when Mitsuru pulled out his little ring that he got for Kokoro, I was like, God damn it. God damn it. It's beautiful. So, you know, you, you have to be heartless to, to hate love. You, you, you can't hate love. And these guys are in love with each other. Even when their minds are wiped, they are in love with each other. We have to go with that. So, the, the thing that got me, though, so... The group is getting pushed back. It looks like Vrim is on the verge of winning. Uh, Nana and Hachi, they had to abandon the little giant spaceship that they were in because it's actually a bomb, and it's it's literally heading towards Vrim. And again, because it's sentient, it's just cra straight crash course trying to make it to, you know, a past. And with Hachi and Nana managing to make it out, which is great, Hero finally gets to reach zero two and the awakening happens. And I gotta tell you guys, zero two was fucking beautiful. Did you not see her in that? Y'all, I know y'all saw it, but whoo, she was fine. It was like zero two grew up. She grew up. Beautiful, beautiful. And I, I'm not sure if a lot of people will be able to will be able to peep this, but I love how Studio Trigger design the true apost as it's been, you know, it's been coined. The Frank itself is actually zero two in a wedding dress. Like you can actually see the veil kind of wafting out in the back. It's kind of translucent. You can see that. You've got the uh the big frills at the bottom that just flares out so you don't even see her feet. It's it's a wedding dress. It, it I I'm hundred percent 
it's a beautiful wedding dress for zero two. And it's kind of that way of saying that, you know, even though they're not going to quote unquote get married, it's just a marriage between hero and zero two, just kind of in its final form. So I thought that was fantastic. And it was completely out of left field. Did not see that one coming at all. Now, the thing that I am worried about, and I'm going to want to wrap this up soon. On Earth, with Mitsuru and Kokoro, if they're protecting Zero Two, because, you know, she still was kind of, you know, reaching out, her body turned to stone. And I'm a little nervous about that, guys. I'm not going to lie. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a little nervous. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Is this a protection thing? Kind of like how a turtle goes into a shell? Or is it like a metamorphosis, like when a you know caterpillar turns into a butterfly? Like I don't know, because it looks like what happened was when Hero finally convinced Zero Two to let him in, it was like what was remaining inside of Zero Two on Earth kind of left her body completely and went out into space, into Mars, and she was not finally able to merge with Hero to create the truer past. And again, like I said, I cannot stress to you guys enough how freaking beautiful Zero Two looked in that form. It was amazing. Like the animation in this episode for all the different ships, the space battles, it it was fucking beautiful, man. Okay, no complaints. No complaints. So in the end, it looks like next week will be the final the final episode. Uh, I do not think we're going to get a, a season two of Darling in the French, which is sad. But again, I definitely enjoyed this ride. And it looks like now, well, actually, there is one small gripe again. So we get through a pass. She wipes out the remaining um, squads of Rim. And now she's going through this space portal that the Colossus built long ago. But if it's my understanding, like, did we ever notice, did we ever know if, the Colossus ever went into space in the first place. I thought they kind of were like highly advanced, but they were kind of on Earth. I never knew that in, back in the day, they had these asteroids that had like a warp gate to it. So that's a little weird, but again, that's just a small tip, you know, a small nitpick. I'm not going to hold that against the episode at all. So Hero and Zero Two are going on their solo mission to save the Earth, and they're going to probably go fight Grim. And again, I'm I'm ready for it, but let me know what you guys think. Did you enjoy this episode? Did you love Zero Two in her true past form with that wedding dress and those? Whoo, that girl bad. All right, guys, shut up the king here. Have an awesome day.